views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hola everyone and welcome to Open, the one and only show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café Con Leche every Friday. And today's show is dedicated to leaders and entrepreneurs. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Leading things off, we'll learn more about the new book, Taina, an urban story filled with magical realism, love, and redemption when we sit down with renowned novelist Ernesto Quinones. And after that, we'll sit with Platinum Boy Music CEO and friend to the show, Antoine Amadeus Thompson, who will tell us about his latest projects, partnerships, and philanthropy for the Bronx community. Then we'll speak with founder of Ruby Love, uh, Crystal Etienne, about the unique line of apparel dedicated to making women feel comfortable during that special time of the month. Plus, we'll hear from founder and CEO of VJR Enterprises, Victoria Jen Rodriguez, to discuss entrepreneurship, empowerment management, and her new networking project, The Female Collaborative. And later on in the show, Bobby C brings us an up to date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And lastly, this week's open artist spotlight features a creative and humanitarian from the Bronx who will shed light on mental health and debut his new single. So uh, sit back y prepárate. All this and more is headed your way because now we are officially open. to open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café Con Leche for the next hour. Always inviting you to get social with us online. That's right. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV or like us on Facebook at Open Bronx Net Television. And of course, don't forget while you're there, follow moi on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Snapchat at Rina Valentin. So our next guest is uh, our first guest, I should say, is here to talk about his new book, Daina, is the latest novel written by acclaimed novelist and Cornell professor Ernesto Quinones. Uh, the story is a uniquely dark, coming-of-age novel rife with urban magical realism, love, and redemption. And, uh, well, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, though Taina is far more modest in scope than Bodega Dreams. It has the same complicated intimacy with the neighborhood and its history. And joining us to tell us more about the book, please welcome Ernesto Quinones. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rina. Thank you for being here. And first and foremost, congratulations on birthing a new book. Uh, th thank you for inviting me uh, to talk about the book. And so um, how long has this book been in the making? Um, it hasn't been the making that long. What I was doing was raising my daughter and having such a great time with her. And now that she's like 15 and wants nothing to do with me, uh -huh. I said, you know, let me go back to writing. <laughs> That's basically what happened. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can understand, right? As a parent, I get it, right? There's that time period, and I, I kind of i am counting on that as well. It's almost like saying, oh, okay, I'm going to hold on until I'm no longer held on to. Yeah. And so uh, when you decided to take the approach of creating this book, how much time did it involve? It involved, um, the, the seats were always there and I was always writing and I was always writing it and I was writing other stuff. Um, what I wanted was to leave a, uh, a mythology to Spanish Harlem in El Barrio. And the mythology of Spanish Harlem is of course, the ma majority of it is hardworking people and you have your drug lords like Willy Bodega, you have your santeros like Papelito from Chango's Fire. And now I wanted to leave it with, with a virgin birth. I wanted to leave it with a baby. And that's what Taina is. It's like a magical realism of leaving the mythology of the virgin birth in El Barrio. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that you also put a, a woman in the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. I think it looks like Ocasio. It's, it's not, but I would love it. If Ocasio would say, is that me? I'll say, yes. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. I, I think it represents all of us who uh, mm -hmm. identify with our Taina or Taino heritage. Yes. Yes. So, all right. So let's talk about this urban magic realism and this. Uh, I personally, I'm a personal uh, fan of magic realism. And so um, you already kind of gave us a little bit of insight. You know, it's, it's you've got that Virgin Mary thing going on. Right. Um, however, there's a it's, it's a young individual. I think they're in high school or something. Yeah, right. Yes. So give us a little more insight. Well, you know, um, I believe that um, there's magic in us. There's magic in our cultures. There's no need for vampires or dragons or zombies. The Taino culture, the, the, the Latino culture, the Puerto Rican culture, the, the, the Ecuadorian culture, the Colombian, whatever your culture is, you have magic within your culture. So there's no need to go anywhere. So what's the culture of El Barrio, you know? Well, we have santeros, we have uh, mythology. For example, one of the people in the book is, he's called El Bejigante. And of course, Bejigante is the folkloric devil from Puerto Rico. And what, what, that, what that Bejigante is, is basically an old man who's very tall, and he only comes out at night. And everyone calls him El Bejigante. And just by giving him that name, it makes him magical. So in my book, I don't call him El Viejo, I call him El Bejigante. So El Bejigante comes and he talks to me. And just by the, word I'm, just by the way I'm wording this figurative language, it, everything becomes magical. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do with the book. There's really nothing in the novel that floats or, or you know, um, or, or, or flies or breathes uh, uh, fire. It's, it's, a, it's a believable magic that actually exists in our culture. Like, for example, the virgin birth. Um, you know, every Sunday we go to church to, to see the baby. And no one says, but that's a, that's a lie. That never happened. We take it as if that's true. So it is true. And stuff like that is what I'm doing. That kind of um, language plays what I'm doing in Taina, and right. as well as telling a story. And you urbanized it, and right. of course you Latinoized it, if that's even a word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so um, this book was just recently released, uh, so we're kind of like giving you the first insight on it, right? Because it just yes. you just published it uh, September of yes. this year. Yes, it just came out last. Right? Yes. Yeah, and so. What kind of feedback have you gotten thus far? I've gotten wonderful feedback, and one of the things that makes me very happy is um, you mentioned uh, the magical realism, and um, someone mentioned, I think it was Julia Alvarez, the writer of the Dominican uh, American of um, uh, How the Garcia it, Girls Lost Their Accents, Time of the Butterflies, right, time and of the she butterfly. said that magical realism has crossed the border and it's found its place in, in, in the ghettos of Spanish Harlem. In the, I, was, I was like, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, because what I'm also trying to do with the book is tie the, the Latinos with the Latin Americans, writers from the 70s, Garcia Marquez, Vargas Llosa, Carlos Fuentes, Jose Donoso, those guys, uh, Luis Rafael Sanchez, of course. I'm trying to tie them to the New Yorkian uh, uh, poets that I grew up with, as well as other writers. So as a professor, how, you know, and uh, obviously being in the field of, um, of just uh, scholastics. How does your work tie into the work that you do? Well, you know, one of the things that I get to do is that I get to read a lot. So um, what I'm also trying to do in the novel is bring back a lot of Puerto Rican writers that no, no longer um, are, are as read. For example, Pedro Juan Soto, uh, absolutely amazing writer uh, from the 50s. Um, so he, his character of a baby his name is Usmail, and it's really U.S. male. And Pedro Juan Soto wrote a book called Usmail, and Usmail is basically a story of a family, and they can't and um, they can't read English; they only read Spanish. So when they see the mailbox, you know, U.S. male, they say Usmail. That's a beautiful name. Let's name the kid that name, hmm. and that right there makes it magical. Got so it. bringing that character back. Pedro Juan Soto Susmail and putting him in this magical realist uh, setting in El Barrio, um, I get a kick out of that. I think, you know, not only am I trying to be literary, but I'm being literary from my own culture, bringing people, writers from my own culture that did not get the same, you know, acclaim that I have, the same acclaim that I'm, the reason I have this acclaim is because I'm standing on their shoulders. Um, so that makes me very happy.
Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. And in closing, because just because your humility, it's really admirable. Um, and it's also admirable that you're using, you're being clever about people wanting to look further, not just read your book and put it down, kind of uh, raising the curiosity of like, who are these characters and what are they related to? And they're related to other authors. So that's yeah. lovely. Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's very different than Bodega Dreams. Um, because El Barrio isn't all like, uh, you know, like bodega dreams. It's also a hardworking family. It's also magical, you know, botanicas and uh, churches and, and rumors and gossip. And that's what this book um, has a lot of. Has a lot of. Well, we want to thank you for coming to thank our studios. Thank you for inviting me. And coming all the way down from Cornell to make sure that our viewers got the first insight on uh, the new book by Ernesto Quinones, Taina. Thank you. All right, you guys, once again, the book Taina can be found at the, the Lit Bar, Barnes & Noble, and on Amazon. We're taking a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a pioneering women's line that is all about making women feel comfortable every month. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> to open uh, we're gonna jump to Ruby Love uh, Ruby Love is a female tech e-commerce apparel company rooted in the belief that a woman's time of the month should never stop her from doing being and going and the company not only has leak proof underwear but also has swimwear and activewear and joining us to tell us more please welcome entrepreneur Ruby Love and founder Crystal Etienne hello and welcome hi thank you for having me oh my goodness girl <laughs> I, you know, I started reading about all of this and I'm going, right? Listen, this conversation may not be for everyone, but I think it's an important conversation to have, especially for those yes. who have uh, young girls coming of age and having to have Absolutely. the conversation. I'd like to open up the conversation, just even talking about that preparation kit that you put together. Yes, it's funny you call it a preparation kit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, it's a first period kit and... Um, it's to open up the communication in a way that young girls that are like 9 to 13 really understand. Because girls these days are starting their puberty as early as 8 and 9 years old. And they just can't be spoken to the way we were spoken to or not spoken to. And the communication just needs to be open. Um, because if you start it very early, at an early age, I feel that there will be better women's health. Right. And, and the reason I even opened up with that is because that, that's a certain age where um, it, it's an awkward conversation. And it's pretty much a conversation that is usually had just when it happens. And yep. then it's kind of like you have to deal with it. And then there's the other aspect of it, the hygiene and all the extra work that goes into making sure that um, things are leak proof, which leads me into yes. <laughs> the apparel and um, just the interest that you had in creating something that is, um, I guess easy to man, right? Just as simple as wearing a pair of jeans. So, okay, I had to really sit with this. I'm going, okay, well, how are, uh, how would one wear a pair of underwears, not put a pad, not put anything, and just, you know, let it flow? 
Um, it's just as simple as wearing a pair of jeans. Um, just like I said, it is for dealing with, uh, I would say it's more than just period apparel. It is confidence, it's freedom, it's the possibility to be able to do what you want when you want. Um, instead of worrying about a leak or a stain, how many times or how many people have had that problem and just had that issue of where you get up or you're in a board meeting, you're going to school and you're just having that feeling, it totally takes that away. It totally takes that away. Within two, within two minutes. Within two minutes. <laughs> interesting. That's so interesting. But what enticed you to even come up with this product? My own frustration. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I feel you, sister. I feel yes. you. <laughs> it is definitely my own frustration. Um, there's been so many times I was a woman who had um, fibroids and PCOS, and I wasn't able to insert a foreign object into my body. Um, so I needed something that gave me, like, that security whenever I needed it. And I just went and I just started researching and I figured it out. That's what I did. How much time did that take you? Um, a couple of months. It took a couple of months like to really, really get it correct. Um, dealing with different factories, um, writing the patent, uh, making every sure that everything was proprietary. And I didn't want to just do a product that was just absorbent. I actually wanted to solve the problem, like to create a full solution. So our product not only does it absorb and has that built-in liner, it also stops any front side or back leaks. Right. So, right. I, I know there, there's like a, a it, there's a dry tech mesh there. Right. They, right. Is that yep. what it's referred to? Because I yes. was like, oh my gosh, she, she, it looks like somebody did engineering on this. Yes, it is. It's a complete developed technology product. Um, it's just not to absorb your leaks. Um, if you leak, one of the main problems as women, we have a problem with front side or back leaks. It's like I'm a front, do I leak from the front, I leak from the back. Um, so what it does is it angles correctly under the cavity of the body and then it collects your flow immediately on onset before it even spreads. Now we've uh, obviously gotten into detail about the technical <laughs> aspect of it. Let's talk about the fashionable aspect of it because you do underwear and bathing suits. Absolutely. Who wants to wear like your period underwear? <laughs> you know, like everyone always makes the joke about, oh, I'm going to put on my period, period underwear. underwear. It's like holy <laughs> underwear, ugly. And I just wanted to make it so that it was that you just felt normal wearing it. And that's where our swimwear comes into place. Our swimwear has a bit more technology. Um, obviously, because it's made specifically for water activity, there's no swelling, there's no odor in any of our products. Um, but the swimwear, you could just wear it on a beach and no one would even know. It looks just like your regular swimwear, but even prettier, I would say. So this is actually really good for people who are active in sports, like professional swimmers. Absolutely. And, um, and we have plenty of them that use it. And you have plenty of them that use it. Right? Yes. So, I mean, it's not exclusively for them, but uh, is there anything um, that you've designed for men? Yes. So I, I had read something. I was like, well, what would they possibly... Well, men leak more than women. Ah, well... <laughs> and we want to talk about leakage. Interesting. Interesting. I never thought about that, right? Because they, they kind of shake yes. in order to dry. And their, and their wife purchases them all the time because they're tired of, like, doing the laundry. Right. Men men leak more than women. That's, I will leave it there. <laughs> okay. So we're not going to talk <laughs> about that topic. We're going to stick to the women and the next generation of young ladies who need this yes. kind of um, technology in their life, right? So uh, I'm referring to it as technology because I still and I can't wait to try mine because I'm going, oh, my gosh. How, how do you wear it and, and not concern yourself with anything, um, it, it, including, I mean, you know, again, this conversation is a little, um, uh, maybe a little too TMI, but uh, <laughs> it, there's a certain odor that comes with that release. And so, yes, our products have no plastic or PUL. It's all organic. Um, our whole entire gu um, gusset is organic and it's made from all the finest materials and there's no odor. Odor usually comes from plastic. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and or PUL and things like that. And right. ours have, does not have any of that. Beautiful. So, um, well, the holidays are coming along. What do yes. you want to leave our guests with? Um, just go to Ruby Love and get yourself, especially if you know a young girl, I would say our first period kit is that first conversation. Um, it's not a bunch of products that are in there just like for periods. It's things that they can understand and it leads them through the practice of better health and better hygiene, which is what we're, which, which we're doing. Right, educating in the process. Yes. Awesome, and thank you for bringing it here. Thank you. And sharing it with our viewers. And you guys, once again, to purchase some Ruby Love apparel, please be sure to visit rubylove.com.
www.thrivingmomsdoing.com. We do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about another entrepreneur that's all about empowering people to be their very best. Don't go anywhere. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. love. Our family is no less than any other family. Hey, welcome back to Open Everyone. You know, we always invited you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us at Broxnet TV. And while you're there, tweet me too at Rina Valentin. Our next guest is an entrepreneur who looks to maximize the full potential of her clients through her company, VJR Enterprises. As a leadership consultant, she's been able to coach individuals from entry level to executives, including companies such as Fortune 500, iHeartMedia, NBC Universal, Comcast, Barclays, BlackRock, and that's just to name a few. And she has a nonprofit uh, organization called the Female Collaborative and recently launched a new show called Victoria Hashtag. Victoria Jen, dot, um, excuse me, hashtag Victoria Jen TV on YouTube. And joining us to tell us more, please welcome VJR Enterprises CEO and founder Victoria Jen Rodriguez. Hello and Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you. It's nice to finally have you here. I know, I know. We tried so much, but we did it. <laughs> no, well, it's all good. Yes. I, I, I know you and I became acquainted during a 100 Hispanic Women uh, yes. conference, and you were one of the panelists, and you've been doing magnificent work. Thank you. And it's been an uh, absolute delight to follow your journey. And, thank you. And, uh, again, the fact that you've chosen to take what you do and pass it to pass it forward to females and um, people of color. Let's just talk a little bit about how this whole arc took place. Yeah, so uh, 15 years in corporate America, and about three years ago, I decided to bet on myself and go entrepreneurship full time. And so my consultancy focuses on humanizing the corporate experience and so working with institutions to help them build out strategic campaigns on how they attract, develop, and retain talent, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. And the Female Collaborative was born as a result of me going to networking events as an entrepreneur, trying to get some capital, trying to build real relationships to scale my business. And there was a genuineness that I felt that was missing in authenticity that I was yearning for. And so since I didn't see it in the market, I created my own. Nice. Smart. Yes. Right? So you went, you did the whole corporate thing. Yes, I did. And um, what did you feel in that experience was missing? I felt the human element was missing from the corporate experience. And so it's very robotic, especially in the industries I worked in. So I worked on Wall Street, I worked in pharma, healthcare, and it's very structured and it's very much about oiling the machine instead of smart disruption. And so I decided there was a gap in the market, especially with the generational shift and just new talent wanting to work for organizations that really appreciate their individuality and want to invest in them in different ways. And so now is the perfect time for what I offer in terms of getting organizations to think and develop their employees differently. 
I, I like that term, smart disruption. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, please, define it. Well, it's defined, you know, disruption sometimes has a negative connotation. <laughs> and so I put the word smart in front of it so that people can digest it a little bit better. But essentially what it is, it's innovation. It's rocking the boat. It's coloring outside the lines. It's not being afraid to set a trend instead of doing what everyone else is doing. So since you said you focused on working with the, the actual machines, the, the people who are contributing to the machine, yes. what do you feel is the gap between the leadership and the workers? I think there's some biases, right? Some bias that exists. Um, and also I think we've all been preconditioned to believe, especially people of color, that we need to work a certain way, we need to look a certain way, we need to talk a certain way in order to fit in. And so a lot of my work is centered around empowering people to stand out because that is your true competitive advantage. Right, and so the, the day and age that we live in right now yeah. with a lot of uh, accessibility yes. and invisibility, yes. right? Because people have the ability to be their own entrepreneurs. Yes. So mm -hmm. these individuals, do you work with them? Those who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, so how do you coach them? Well, we really start with your why. Why are you doing this? Right. Because it's your why that's going to allow you to go through this struggle. It is a hustle and it takes a certain personality and characteristics in order for people to actually succeed. Um, you know, 90% of, of uh, new business owners fail in the first year. I believe that's the stat, but it's a pretty staggering stat. Um, and so your why is what's gonna carry you through. So we spend a lot of time around your why and also a reality check. I think entrepreneurship has been um, positioned in a way where it's exotic and mm -hmm. people are looking to give their nine to five the deuces so mm -hmm. they can go do their own thing because it feels empowering, but it's the hardest work you will ever do. Right, because there is no time clock. Nope, and <laughs> you are your own boss and the self-discipline that's required with that type of freedom um, takes a certain kind of person to, to hold out in the long run. And what's your take on this new wave of branding and, and just doing the entrepreneurship via the social media, Instagram, and and or like life coaching uh, via Instagram. Like, what do you, I just see a lot of promotional and sponsored pages that are people selling um, through the social media, which kind of makes it, it it's for me, it, it isn't as welcoming as it was when it first started. I think there's negatives and positives to it. I think everyone needs to understand why they're doing it. And also on the consumer front, you need to do your research to make sure you're not getting taken advantage of. But social media is a powerful tool and any spark smart person is going to use that tool in order to reach their success level, whatever their goal is. And so you just need to determine why you're in it. And if you're in it to win it, you're going to do whatever you need to do. Right. And I guess really where I'm coming from is the perspective of just a person using social media to build their business, but not really build their business. Right. Meaning it's phony what they're promoting. They really have no business. <laughs> right. Um, well, it's a fact and it happens quite often and that's what happens when you enter saturated markets or when you are given a platform such as social media to say and do whatever as you like. Um, and so again, it's up to the consumer to do the research. Now, we definitely have to t talk a little bit about the female collaborative, yes, right? Yes, let's do because that. You have a summit coming up, Yes, right? I do. So let's talk about that. Yes, we have our third annual Women Who Wore Summit on March 6th through 7th at the Tillery Hotel in Brooklyn. Very cute hotel. Um, and this is our premier event that we host every year. It's a two-day experience where women come together to really revitalize their soul and also walk away with a sharper mindset so that they can pursue their endeavors both personally and professionally. And so how does this work? Are people become members or is it uh, just a conference that people can just sign up for and pay for? Can they pay for both days or can they pay for each day individually? And what kind of females are we talking about? Like uh, what levels? So it is for the public. We are a membership organization, so of course our members get priority access, they get the discounts. Uh, it's for women who have at least 10 years of experience. So we're talking about seasoned women who are looking to collaborate with other seasoned women um, to create magic together. Um, and so that's the profile that we're looking for. We have professionals, executives, all the way up to the executive level, um, entrepreneurs, influencers. Mainly if you identify as a badass and you're doing good in this world and you're looking to multiply that, the female collaborative is for you. So does the business uh, matter? What, what type of business? Like, are you pairing people up according to their respective fields or is that not even important? 
Well, we are diverse in the sense that we represent over 50 industries. We have a 2,000 plus network, and so the uh, significance of our network is a diversity of experience and value add. And so it's really for the woman who is looking to level up in a number of different ways. It really is dependent upon what are you working on and then going and collaborating with somebody in that industry or field. Beautiful. And so before we go, let's just share uh, really quickly yeah. so that people can check you out on YouTube, what you share on your YouTube channel. Yes. So Victoria Gen TV is my baby. It's where I interview professionals of color to talk about their stories and their tribulations, but from a very vulnerable and raw standpoint. And the objective is to empower the viewers to be comfortable in their own skin, live out loud, and not feel like you need to adapt to the machine, but you, in fact, can create the machine. Yeah, and or be a contribution to the machine. Absolutely. As you are and as you are not. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You for, got it. For bringing it Thank here. you so much. It's Victoria, a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. And you guys, once again, for career coaching and everything with the Female Collaborative, be sure to visit vjrenterprises.net. And oh, actually, the, for the Female Collaborative, uh, you can sign up by going to where do, where do they have to go? Oh, thefemalecollaborative.com slash events. Okay, so it's the Female Collaborative dot com slash yeah. events there yes. you go all right stay tuned because our next guest is a multi-platinum record producer and we're getting we're finally going to get to sit down with him and talk about his upcoming projects and giving back to the community don't go anywhere behold the angry giant behold the angry giant behold the angry giant behold the Angry Giant! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Hey, welcome back to Open, everyone. Our next guest is a multi-platinum record producer, musician, and educator from the Bronx who has produced for some of the biggest names in hip-hop music, R&B, and pop music, such as Chris Brown, Jennifer Loga Lopez. Oh, my gosh, I can't even believe I was going to say Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo, and Tyga, and Justin Bieber, to name a few. He recently had the opportunity to work on hip-hop artist Young Ma's debut album, Her Story, as well as Chris Brown's latest album, Indigo. Aha, uh -huh. apart from being a successful producer and entrepreneur. He's also all about giving back to the community, joining us to tell us more about his projects. Please welcome Platinum Boy Music Inc. CEO Antoine Amadeus Thompson. What an intro. Do -do. So flawless. I gotta go boop, 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 boop. Yeah, that one, that exactly. One that? That's the one, that's the one. How I you doing, Queen? I'm fabulous, You look King. great. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Good to be back. Oh, we're so happy to have you thank here. You we so love much. that you always stop in Absolutely. when you're in town. Absolutely. My man, you be traveling a little too much for my Ooh, taste. I need a break, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it here. Yes, I made it, thank God. It was so much, it was so difficult, but you know, God got us. Uh, God got us. God and, got us. And God then got some, us. And, and we then just some. take a deep breath mm. and then we have a good time. So we're here. I know, and you came with your decorations. Yes, do you see them? I see, I see. Inspire you, Amadeus, yes. for your inspiration um, from Compulsive Magazine. Mm -hmm. That's this year. We got Unlabeled Awards. Yes, and I'll explain that. So basically, a lot of times in the music industry or in the entertainment period, a lot of the people behind the scenes that are not in the forefront, you know, sometimes get uh, overlooked. So the Unlabeled Awards were like, you know, highlights people 
that's in the back, behind the scenes, you know, that don't sometimes don't get the respect that's due. So that's what that award is from. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. And before we even get to the next award, I want to just talk a little further about that because when we get together, we always uh, tend to share the importance of understanding that when you're in the business, it's not solely about being in the front. Yes. And you play a lot of roles and, and you kind of dabble in, in right. a lot of positions, right? right? You. Uh, you play drums mm -hmm. and you produce a lot. Yes. Uh, and so I, I, there's something to be said when you're pretty much playing a role of a creator and not necessarily being uh, looked at right. as the person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so this is very important yes, for people to understand. And thank you for breaking it down, but let's, I want to know what you want it for. Well, uh, so basically it was like musicianship, but then it's a combination of musicianship and uh, like, what I do in the community. And again, as you mentioned, you know, and now that we have social media and the internet, you know, I've been producing for 18 years, uh, so I was doing this before internet was there and computers were there. So now that we have social media, now you can kind of be in the forefront to, to some extent because everyone can see what you're doing via, via what you post or what other people post, videos, live shows, me live in the studio. So now that's, that, that's here, that helps. Right. But, you know, I'm just appreciative of the Unlabeled Awards because, again, you, if you're not the superstar in the forefront, the, the person that, you know, the fans are chasing, right, right. you know, people overlook you. So right. I'm just appreciative that they highlight, and not just musicians, but it was all kind of different walks, VJs and, and, and publicists and managers and people that, you know, mayors and different things. So it was, it was a great day. Well, congratulations. It's a great day. It sounds like yeah. it was a great day. And I'm really so excited that you brought it here. I had to. You to know, share I had to, it with I our had to show you. It's one thing to talk about it. Right. But it's another thing to display it. And, you know, when I come home, you know, and, and I'm on a show with you, it's, it's like me coming home and me making you proud and me making the rest of the Bronx proud. So I had to, you know, kind of come show off in a humble way. Yeah. Show you off know, in, a in a humble, humble way. way. <laughs> it's, it's ways that you show off. Humble. He shows up hum with three. Humbly <laughs> show. You know? That's hilarious. That's hilarious, right? But He's like, know, oh, I'm going to do it humbly. Humbly. Right? Humbly, but yes. I'm coming with three. Three. Yeah. Three. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this one because it says Queens Youth Music Festival, mm -hmm. and that was recent yes. as well, mm -hmm. July 21st, honoring Amadeus for your work with youth and the arts. Yes. And so there's that paying it forward and passing Amen. it forward. I've had the honor of serving yes, on you one did. of your yes, panels. Yes, absolutely. Did. And Amazing so th job. Uh, thank you, darling, and thank you for having me. But the, the, the people that you put together to service, uh, the community as well as colleges and institutions. So let's talk about what uh, garnered you this one. This was the same. Uh, you know, they they looked at all of the stuff that I've been doing with the teaching, with the educating, with the going back to my to my neighborhood, and and just and not just uh, uh, me going places, but what I do online. You know, what I do on my social media. A lot of people that I run into that I meet are saying, "Man, I just I go to your page every day for inspiration. I go to your page for motivation." So you know, they highlighted that. And what was amazing about this was it was held at City Field where the New York Mets play. So I went and got me a, a jersey made up. I said King Amadeus in the back, and it was just a my. You know, I got a, I got a lot of heat for that. As you can see today, I came proper. <laughs> I got I got a lot of heat for that. I'm a New York I'm a New York Yankees fan, okay. but Robinson Cano, who was a Yankee, is on the Mets and he's my friend. Oh, okay. and I we got to support friends, you know. So I got yeah, a lot of heat. I, that's good. But I'm I'm but doing the right thing today. It's also important to show the the relations, yes, right? Because yes. we all have a relationship, and yes. whether we're bringing it on air and showing it to you in this formal manner, but there's other things that we make it our business to communicate Absolutely. and be in touch with, so that we're elevating each other in Absolutely. the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that about you. Thank you. I Thank love you that so about much. you. So what do you have coming up? Uh, I just produced eight songs on a Young Amaze album. I dropped, I think, two weeks ago called Her Story in the Making uh, with my, my team of producers, Platinum Boy Music. That's doing very, very well. Uh, she took about two years to make that album, and it's, it's charted. I was just with her last night in Casanova for the Billboard event. Uh, so that, of course, as you mentioned, the Chris, the Chris Brown album, Indigo, uh, certified gold already, and it's all over the charts. Produced a song called Take a Risk on that with my young brother, uh, Mike DeMuro, uh, and just doing what I love to do. Actually, once I leave you, I'm flying to Vegas. Um, That's what you do yeah. every week, isn't it? Yes. Like, you yes. leave every Friday. I have a residency at Dre's Nightclub, so if you're ever in Las Vegas, um, you know, come to Dre's Nightclub. It's the number one hip-hop club in Vegas. And basically, I play drums. I play drums alongside the DJ. Shout out to DJ Franzen. This week is real New York. We got Fabulous performing this weekend, and we got French Montana, Bronx 
performing this weekend. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to be a good time. I, I haven't slept yet. I might do that on a plane, though. Yeah, exactly. You just fall asleep on the plane. Yes. But, you know, we want to thank you for always coming through here thank you. Thank on you. our set thank you. and inspiring the next generation. I brought you something. You did? Yes. You brought me something? I actually hit oh it very gosh, well. Oh, my gosh, I love gifts. Um, <gasps> Okay, so yes, I'm I'm a I'm a brand ambassador. This is, we're hearing it first uh -huh. for Bel Air. Uh, so they called me a black bottle boy, and um, I just you know I just I, I just wanted to bring you this gift. It's it's pink. It it's beautiful. It it and, and it's beautiful as you. And I just wanted to you know it's been a long day. So when you get home, you get you some orange juice, you know, and you and you make a little mimosa. A little mimosa. And you kick back and you look at TV, you know, with the princess, and then you have a little. You know, a little, little, little beverage there. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what you're talking about, right? The king knows how to yes. Yes. approach a queen. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You just made my day. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Amadeus. Amadeus, Amadeus. Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. Amadeus. Hey, we can I party, know, man. We I can know party we can, day. but we got. I we think got. you got more show to do, so you better get <laughs> I do, I do, I do. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you for being with us. <laughs> for more information on Amadeus he, uh, and his latest projects, check him out on Amadeus PMB. And make sure to visit his website, PlatinumBoyMusicWorldwide.com. We do have to take a quick break, but when we return, Bobby C. brings us the uh, up to date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. Don't go anywhere. Let's go, Yankees. Oh man, what a difference three games makes in the American League Championship Series. First, the Yankees go up 1-0 in the ALCS. Then they lose a really tough heartbreaker in game number two before heading back to the Bronx to lose two straight. So the story heading into Friday night is the Yankees are on the brink of elimination. Yeah, there's not too many mistakes. You know, that's the biggest thing. You know, we're just having been getting, you know, that one pitch, you know, over the plate when we got guys on base. You know, that's the one thing we're missing. So uh, trying to capitalize on those. But I wouldn't say they're pitching us too, too different. You know, a lot of off-speed pitches, uh, sneak a fastball in there every now and then. But we just got to capitalize. That's the biggest thing. We got to capitalize. And we got opportunities. No, I mean, you know, you're not really thinking about the offense or anything like that. It's more about you not executing the pitch and uh, you know just giving up three runs you know in one swing so um, you know I'm, I'm just kicking myself for that pitch. You gotta forget about these three games we got lost you know uh, I believe in, in, in the team that we have we believe in ourselves we gotta flush it out and come back ready to play tomorrow. Game one was the high, but games two, three, and four have been the lowest of lows. Even the defense fell apart in game four last night from the stadium. I honestly don't have any answer. Answers for you folks. I wish that I did. A pair of three-run home runs from George Springer and Carlos Correa paced the Astros as they defeated the Yankees 8-3 in game four of the ALCS to take a 3-1 series lead. The Astros are now one win away from reaching the World Series for the second time in three years where they would meet the upstart Washington Nationals. The Nats swept the St. Louis Cardinals earlier 
this week. As for last night, Zach Greinke got the start for the Strohs and immediately found himself in hot water. The right-hander issued three walks in the bottom of the first inning, the last of which came with the bases loaded and forced in a run to give the Yankees an early 1-0 lead. The lead wouldn't last long as Springer followed with a three-run blast to left field off Masahiro Tanaka, putting the Strohs on top 3-1. Gary Sanchez would homer later for the Yanks, but that was after the Correa blast. CC Sabathia even looks like he injured his shoulder in the loss. Really tough night in the Bronx, at least for Yankee fans. The Pinstripers will look to avoid elimination in Game 5 of the ALCS tonight at home. James Paxton will oppose Justin Verlander. If not, Games 6 and or 7 will be Saturday and Sunday, respectively, in Houston. We shift gears to the NFL gridiron and a victory, a win for the New York Jets last Sunday in the Meadowlands. Gang Green's offense was as unsightly as an offense could be during quarterback Sam Darnold's three-game absence from the lineup recovering from mono, but they were much better against the Dallas Cowboys when Darnold returned to action in a week six win. We go back inside the locker room for more. I felt good out there. You know, it was it was good to, to hear the fans roar again and be out there on the field with my teammates. There's no better feeling. You know, when you're out for, for so long like I was, um, you realize that this game's a privilege uh, to play it. So it was just good to be back out there. Um, it's a lot different. You know, having your guy in there, you know, uh, you know he's a, he's the you know, kind of the, the, the leader on the offense, you know. I mean, when you got a guy calling the plays in the huddle, getting the guys lined up, you know, making all the checks and things like that. Um, when you miss that for a few weeks, um, it's tough. You know, so the fact that he's back out there is so good. It felt great to get a W. You know, like if I would have had that, that game, then God forbid we would have lost. You know, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't feel like this. You know, so it felt great to get that win. Honestly, just doing our job, man. Playing, playing as you know, as one on defense. Uh, that was our main goal. That was our main focus going in. And um, believe it or not, we've had two outstanding, you know, weeks of practice. Um, last week, obviously, we just didn't get it done. Um, but you know, going into this week, we knew we had to get this win, and we knew what it what it took and what it what it's going to take. Um, it's just communication and playing hard. Darnold thinks the arrow is pointing in the right direction. He believes when everyone is healthy, the Jets' offense can be unstoppable. They face the 6-0 New England Patriots on Monday Night Football. Now would be a good time for unstoppable, Sam. The Jets are 1-4 and, and feeling good, but sorry to say, I'll take the Pats, Rita, to go 7-0. and The Jets got their star back last weekend. The Giants might get theirs this weekend. Big Blue running back Saquon Barkley was a full participant in practice for the second straight day on Thursday, but he didn't guarantee he's playing against the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. Barkley said he's taking his return day by day when asked if he's definitely going to play. Barkley added that he has no doubt that his ankle would hold up well. Giants, Cardinals, 1 p.m. kickoff Sunday at MetLife will have you covered, of course. Tune in on Monday for Monday Open for more. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports on the NHL ice. The New Jersey Devils top the New York Rangers 5-2 Thursday night. The Devils are back in action Saturday afternoon against Vancouver. Meanwhile, the Islanders skate in Columbus Saturday night. The Rangers are in Washington tonight. Puck drops at 7. NBA preseason action. Toronto and Brooklyn play tonight at 7.30 while the Knicks take on number one pick Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans tonight at 8. Knicks fell to Atlanta 196 Wednesday. The Nets defeated the LA Lakers 91-77 last Saturday. In the grand scheme, just preseason hoops. And on a final sports roundup note, the Kansas City Chiefs crushed Denver 30 to six on Thursday night football, but may have lost their star quarterback in the process. The Madden curse continues until Patrick Mahomes emerges from an MRI tube today and doctors read the results. We're limited to the impressions of others. Early reports of a dislocated right kneecap emerged quickly last night and Mahomes himself tried to tweet out an upbeat message. The Chiefs have four more weeks be uh, before their week 12 bye with games against the Packers, Vikings and Titans falling within that best case window. Those could be in the hands of backup Matt Moore. Tough break both literally and figuratively for Mahomes and the Chiefs. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for how the Yankees might be able to pull the upset of upsets. Mm, 
yeah, listen, even me, the eternal optimist, isn't feeling good right now. I actually have been waving the white towel the last two nights at the ballpark. The Yankees have lost their mojo, folks. Game four of the ALCS was a gigantic letdown for the Yankees for a myriad of reasons. They lost, first and foremost, 8-3 to the Astros to fall behind three games to one. Their fans didn't have any zest in the crowd, in my opinion at least. CC Sabathia exited with an injury, likely the final time he'll pitch in his career. Very sad, of course. The offense went 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. But the biggest letdown of the night, though, was the Yankees' defense. They committed four errors, their highest total in a postseason game since committing five errors in Game 2 of the 1976 ALCS. Make no mistake, the two three-run homers by George Springer and Carlos Correa were the big blows in the game, but the errors contributed to the loss and were downright demoralizing. Sounds bleak, right? But listen. Just like Judge said last night in the postgame, this is baseball. Stranger things have happened. When Boston came back in 2004, it only took one play to swing the series. The Red Sox had new life. The Yankees need to find that play today and build from it. As many of our viewers probably know, my mom passed away in August. I wanted the Yankees to win the World Series so bad for her. But sometimes things just don't come together. Yet, I know if she was giving her pregame pep talk to the Bombers today, she would say, just begin at the beginning. The hardest part is starting. Do your best and let the rest take care of itself. And most importantly, believe in miracles. The next man up has been the mantra all season long, and it should remain that way today. Justin Verlander, folks, is not perfect. He's beatable. In fact, the last closeout game in the ALDS, he didn't close out. You remember what happened. Verlander gave up three runs in the first inning, coughed up two bombs, struggled with his control for you know, three walks during a, an, an ineffective uh, stretch with sliders for three and two-third innings. He departed to a jeering Tropicana field crowd and with the worst game score of any of his postseason starts. Here's a motivating stat as well. It's Yankee Stadium, not including wild card games. This is the 70th Yankees postseason series. Only once have they lost three straight at home to end a series, and that happened 77 years ago. In the 1942 World Series, New York dropped three straight at home against the St. Louis Cardinals to lose in five games. This year's Yankees went 57-24 and at home during the regular season. Not once did a team beat them three times in a row on their own turf. Win game five, take your chances in game six, and set up the showdown against Garrett Cole in game seven. He hasn't lost since May 22nd. Stranger things have happened. Begin at the beginning. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Welcome back to Open. It's now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. This week's Open Artist Spotlight features Bronx creative and humanitarian who's dedicated to bringing awareness to mental health by working with non-for-profits through music the most personal way he knows how to connect and reach people. Here now to debut his song, Running Out of Time, please welcome Advice. Yeah. 
seems like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Feels like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Yeah. Is there more to life aside the surface that we live in? The age of information, but we scared to see what's written. Ignorance is bliss, we stuck in cycles that we've been in. Our views don't ever change, we all divided in our vision. The tension and the friction leave no space for intermission. We never get the break and only caught up in the distance. Defining our own limits, cause we stuck within our pain. Perception is what's missing when we blind in disarray. Our patience running thinner, it's so hard to be okay. I always speak in general, cause self I do include. At times I'm in my feelings, but project to being rule but no matter what's the matter need to find some space in tune the madness gets us madder but the change begins with you yeah i said the change begins with you yeah the madness gets us madder but the change begins with you yeah yeah feels like i'm running out of time to let my words be known feels like i'm running out of time to let my words be known feels like i'm running out of time to let my words be known yeah, feels like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Yeah, what's it gonna take to plant the seed and watch it grow? Saying that you'll change, but it hardly ever shows. Baby steps to make it proves that we still got to grow. I'm asking all these questions because the answer's hardly known. Depression leaves us sinking, but we hardly ever know. She tell me that she loved me, but it hardly ever shows. I see it in the nose, growing long Pinocchio. I've been hurt, I've been scared, I've been troubled, and I know. The sh that I've endured is like accepting that I'm poor. The sh that I've endured is like, how can I go for more? I always was the shortest, so a front was always first. Standing up in lines, not realizing my own worth. Nine days I contemplate on how I'm feeling, on my goals. That dreaming sh is old, and I'm realistically unknown. But f that, cause I'm grown, I won't let that make me fold. That's the process I call growth. Gotta stand up on our own. It's like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Yeah. It's like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Yeah. Feels like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Yeah. Feels like I'm running out of time to let my words be known. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know why your name is Advice. <laughs> <laughs> That's stuff. Yeah. That's the stuff you wrote that. Yeah, I wrote that. Yeah. I wrote that. So uh, let's just share with everyone what inspires you to do what you do. Um, It's a lot of like the work that I've done, working with a lot of people who are basically in need, mental illness, and also dealing with my own too. Um, I've definitely had to overcome by writing and, you know, that's my form of therapy. So, so w w that's awesome that you found a way to self-therapize, right? Mm -hmm. But what kind of mental illness are we referring to right because there's a lot of people walking depression around. anxiety uh -huh. post-traumatic stress uh -huh. adhd um everything uh-huh everything schizophrenia you name it uh -huh. drug addiction uh-huh yeah no i, I I'm, I'm down with it right because i feel that this is something that needs to be brought into light most definitely a lot more. especially like um even like cycles like as far as like generational cycles of just mental illness that has been ignored you know um i just want to bring those things to light and, and normalize like getting help and you know seeking therapy and all this stuff too right and so you found that um working in this field mm -hmm. that uh you're able to share more through your lyrics through your presentation and so what has that done for you <sighs> what has that done for me well i guess like knowing that my music is able to help other people and that they can go that they go through the similar things that I go through it just helps me like go harder in, in what I want to do as far as like music goes so. I, I want to applaud you because it's brave it's brave to shed your you know those layers and and be true thank you I appreciate that yeah and thank you for sharing it with our viewers where can people get your music um well I'm on all streaming platforms this song is actually not released yet mm -hmm. but I will be releasing it you could follow me on Instagram at NYC Toledo um I also have a website www.nyctoledo.com where you could you know check on me and and see what I'm doing I have performances that I do and I have more music coming out so stay in tune awesome
appreciate it. Thank, all right. Thank you. Woo. All right, you guys, once again, Advice is Music can be found on musical platforms, excuse me, such as SoundCloud. And of course, you can always check them out on Instagram at NYC Toledo. And that is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at bronxnet.tv. I'm Rina Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide paz, prosperity, y amor. Adios. La música. Vamos, vamos.